Hey, uh, lost the audio, uh, don't have the camera, um, but you don't pay for this and I have COVID, so you're lucky you're getting it at all. Enjoy! Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 257 of the... No? 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 no I'll, I'll look it up. To, all right, of the po welcome to the podcast, guys. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and today... Forgot the camera, so I'm filming it on an iPhone. 264. 264, that's what I said. Um, so welcome to the show, guys. We're filming it on an iPhone, uh, and uh, and it, I, you know, if this looks better than the fucking three and a half thousand dollar camera we use, I'm gonna flip out, okay? Because <laughs> uh, I have a feeling that it will, and everyone's gonna go, you should just film it on your iPhone, and I'll be stubborn and say no, all right? So if the quality of this episode looks so much better, guess what? It's not gonna stay that way, because I don't, I can't be bothered. You Using something that's actually arguably better and easier to set up. Welcome to the show. Uh, welcome to the show. I have a, I have a surgery update. I have a surgery update. I spoke to my surgeon. Okay, I've got sleep apnea. I've got to fix my face. They're going to chop it up. I got two surgeries. All right. I've said it many times. That there's your recap. All right. I fall asleep during the day. Uh, I've started. Uh, apparently, um, according to to my girl, I have now started to suffocate and choke on my side. Uh, oh, no. Now, so it used to just be on my back. I couldn't breathe, uh, but then we got a, a, a little vibrating dog collar that would detect every time I'm on my back. It would vibrate, and that would wake me up just enough to roll me over, and then I would sleep on my side. And I've been pretty much exclusively side sleeping for the last year, but uh, it, some for some reason it's gotten way worse, and now I'm I'm not breathing on my side. So now, ladies and gentlemen. I get to get a CPAP machine. <laughs> Fuck! I'm gonna be sleeping with a fucking CPAP machine. Awesome. I'm 80 years old. That's sick. I'm, I'm an 80 year old obese man. <laughs> Dude, I was looking at CPAP machines. If you don't know what it is, it's uh, you know when you get COVID and you can't breathe anymore, so they put you in a special ward and hook you up to tubes and it breathes for you? Imagine if you just didn't have COVID and you had to do that every time you went to sleep. That's what a CPAP machine is. It, it's like a mouth guard attached to a tube attached to a fucking uh, air conditioner and it just makes you breathe while you're asleep. Uh, and, and, and every night now, you know, sometimes, I, like where I live, you can hear, there's lots of trees, you can hear the birds like chirping away, and I usually fall asleep to the birds chirping as they go to bed, or, or I can hear the wind through the trees. Now I'll get to hear the, the, the beautiful sounds of a fucking petrol generator. <coughs> All night. So uh, I'll probably be single soon. I'll be, I'll be sleeping by myself, uh, and uh, I'm 80 years old. I've got a CPAP machine. I was, looking at, um, I was looking at videos of CPAP machines, like trying to choose my model. You know, which is a, so much less exciting than like, oh man, which which laptop should I get? I'm gonna watch Mark S. Brownlee do a few reviews. You know, I wonder what what's the best monitor for my PC? What's the best type of graphics card for my streaming PC? And you get to like sit down and watch like sick like my stream setup and tech review videos and really great stuff like that. Uh, it's a lot less fun when you when you're looking at CPAP machines because it's it, it, all it is is like a doctor. Like, I literally, the best video that I watched and the model that I've picked, the doctor is, is sitting next to, like, an 80-year-old woman. <laughs> like, I should not have this fucking illness. It's only something that, that severely obese people and senior citizens get. And, it, and, and look, I guess I'm both. I guess I'm both. Guys, look at me. I'm the oldest, fattest comedian on planet Earth, according to my throat. Um, so that's exciting. But anyway, I spoke to my I spoke to my surgeon. So I need the CPAP machine until the surgery. I spoke to my surgeon. Now, here's what I thought was going to happen. I don't know if anyone here listening has tried to navigate the healthcare system, but it is so fucking confusing. Mainly because doctors are so smart that none of those guys have social skills. So so they know what they're trying to tell you, but they can't convey it. And and they have to try and convey incredibly complicated, well researched and documented information to a fucking moron in 15 minutes without the use of eye contact or social skills. <laughs> so I end up there like, all right, sweet, that's what you need. And I'm like, okay. And then I leave and I go, what the fuck did he just say? So I thought, and I've planned my whole year like this. I haven't we, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not doing a tour this year because I need two surgeries this year. 
That's what I've told everyone. That's what I've thought. That's what I've planned for. Keelan's just booked a holiday in America for the middle of the year. It's like, sweet, I don't have to do much. <laughs> There's not going to be too much going on. <laughs> Luke's going on a big tour. Uh, Lewis is getting his face fucked up. I'm going to go to America. Keelan, cancel it. <laughs> right. So I thought... Cancel it now! I thought what, what was going to happen to me was I would get the first surgery, I definitely need two, where they chop the roof of my mouth in half, lengthways, my palate, and then they widen it, and then I get braces, and then they cut my jaw in half, widen that, and then it's like 12 to 18 months of braces, and that's two surgeries, uh, and the braces are annoying, but it's fine because I'm going to look super handsome, because I'll have a brand new face and jawline done by a professional cosmetic surgeon. This is a surgery that some people get purely for looks reasons. I'm getting it because of medical reason and the, I get a little bonus of looking like Giga Chad, right, at the end of it. <laughs> now that's what I thought was going to happen, which is not ideal, but it's, it's, you can deal with it because I get to completely cure my ailment and I get to come out looking like a fucking 10. Guess what actually happens, Keelan? What's that? So, the first surgery, we've tentatively booked it in for May, and that's the palate one. That's well, only two months away. Two months away, oh. right? Where they cut the roof of my mouth open, like this, yep. and, then, and then they put it in a spacer on the roof of my mouth, which basically just uh, creates space. And what that means is it, is it pushes on my teeth the left side and the right side, and it widens my mouth. <laughs> and every morning and night, there's a little thing, and I gotta twist it in my mouth, and it goes, oh, oh, oh. and it splits my fucking head in half. And I do that every morning and night for months. Does it hurt? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey man, stick your fingers. If you if you listen at home, what I want you to do is stick your thumbs in your mouth, and then fucking pull them in different directions. Did that hurt? Yeah. All right, now chop your fucking head in half before you do that and then ask me if it's going to hurt. All right? So that happens. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, hang on a minute, Lewis. If you just cut the roof of your mouth in half and then you, you take either side of your teeth and mouth and you widen it, aren't you going to have like a really big gap in between your two front teeth? Yes. Yes, I am. So now here's what I thought was going to happen, Keelan. I thought I was going to get the surgery and then, and then straight away braces mm. and it would fix it up. Yeah. Or, or it would at, very, at the very least cover the gap with braces. <laughs> okay. Hey, guess what? What's that? Nah. What happens now yeah. is I get the surgery, they pull my teeth apart and the surgeon tells me I'm going to have, my two front teeth are going to have a gap the size of two 20 cent pieces <laughs> oh, no. between them, no braces for three months with that giant gap getting gradually worse because I have to gradually widen it. Yeah. yeah. So post surgery, two 20 cent pieces could fit between my two front teeth. And then that space is gonna double in size over the next three months. And then I get braces, and 12 to 18 months after those braces, then I get the surgery that actually makes me look better. So I'm not going to look better for 12, no, for 18 to 24 months now. Uh, so from starting May, I'm going to be the ugliest cunt you follow. <laughs> I guarantee it. I'm going to be the ugliest cunt on this platform that you follow. And yes, I'm including those people you follow for motivational purposes. You know what I mean. If, well, if she can get up in the morning, I can. <laughs> That's going to be me. I'm going to do that. Bro, I'm going to have a gap tooth for six months. That just gets worse. <laughs> you know what's going to happen? All these people watching my videos are going to be like, dude, it's not working. This, yeah. You said you were going to look better. You're looking worse every day. But in 18 to 24 months, it's over for us. It's so over. And I know I've been saying this, right? This is the Australia post of surgeries. <laughs> I know I said that my face, my handsome face, the expected delivery time was, was in the next six months. 
Dude, 24 months from now, it's over for you. I'm gonna be 30! <laughs> Fuck! Dude, Fuck. I just keep thinking if, if I could have got this done during lockdown if they didn't make the surgery illegal and I'd be coming out super glow up. Man, I'm gonna have a gap tooth. I'm, I'm gonna quit Luke and Lewis. I quit the show. I can't deal with six months of gap tooth jokes from Luke Kidgel. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have a list. Yeah. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to do any podcasts. I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. And I'm gonna have, because not, I'm gonna have, right, obviously a giant gap in the middle of my fucking teeth, which would give anyone a lift. Look at Mike Tyson, right? Mm. But then I'm also gonna have this strange torture device bolted to the roof of my mouth and hooked around my molars. Mm. And then I will have braces and the spacer stays in. How long's your recovery time on this surgery? The, the, this surgery is the, for some reason, the least, uh, the least bad surgery, which I th thought was strange. Like cutting the roof of my mouth in half, I thought that would be pretty rough. Every time I describe this, Keel looks like he's gonna vomit. <laughs> hey man, I, I'm sorry. Are you are you, are you the patient? <laughs> and, oh, poor you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Does it make you uncomfortable describing what's gonna happen to me? Yeah. Poor Keelan. Have you seen all those TikToks of people getting their wisdom teeth out and they drink like three litres of pineapple juice the day before and their recovery is like super quick? Because pineapple juice has some sort of enzyme in Really? It? I don't know if that's true. Well, I get the, that, that first surgery to make room for my teeth to move. They remove my wisdom teeth. So maybe I should do that. Yeah. And then not only will yeah. my recovery process be good, mm. when I get the nurse to suck me off, oh. it'll be pleasant <laughs> for her. Disgusting. Well, it's pri I'm going through private hell. So yeah. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> that's how it works. Yeah, yeah. I I, man, I'm for fucking paying. I miss. I can't <laughs> believe that I fucking misunderstood the surgeon, or he didn't. No, he, he. The fucking problem is, he goes. I'm the surgeon, but the dentist is in control of this. And the surgeon's actually great. He he actually explains everything really well. I, that's the guy I spoke to on the phone. Now, he was really great. And then he sent me off to the dentist and the dentist like is one of those doctors who's like, well, well, I did four years of, I did eight years of, of studying my medical degree. So, you know, you should just kind of get this. Uh, yeah. You know, those people that like they're experts in their field. So they, they don't feel the need to dumb down what they say to you yes. or explain it. They just go, so this is what's happening. And it's like, oh, but yeah, but like, but, but I'm, I'm not a, I'm not you, so like, can you explain that to me? Um, and so the dentist made it sound like he was just going to sort out the timeline and, and he kind of said it to me backwards. And now I've gone back to the surgeon. He's like, oh, no, that's not what's happening. This is what's happening. I'm like, okay, great, cool. I, mean, I guess I've just been paying fucking $200 in private health cover for, for, for a long time, long time longer than I needed to. Awesome. No, I couldn't have got it done earlier anyway because of lockdown and Hobart and everything. But that's, look. That's something for me to look forward to and for you guys to look forward to and for you guys to look into my mouth. Um, every time you watch a fucking video. Welcome to Spearhead Sundays, guys. Would you like to see inside my mouth all I need to do for you to see that is smile and you'll be able to see direct. Dude, I might get a third prosthetic front tooth. Do you reckon that's, that's better or worse than having a gap tooth? Is having three front teeth or the gap? Gap tooth would be better. Dude, I'm going to have the biggest glow down ever. <laughs> that's so, that's so lit. Anyway, guys, look, it's important to keep a positive. I told my friend this and he goes, I reckon I would just die. Uh, he goes, I, I, I would rather just like die at 50. <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. So that's, so that, that's real comforting for, for me. I'm like, man, I think I'm going to look like shit. He goes, yeah, dude, I would rather die like at 50 than look how you're going to look. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's real comforting. Who said that? Oh, that was Mike. <laughs> um, not Radio Mike. Different guy. You guys don't know him. Um, right. So, Keelan, you're moving out at the moment? You're trying to find a new place to rent? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I move out next how's the How's the rental market looking? It's tough. It's, it's tough. gone up even since six months ago when I moved in. Really? Because when... I remember when I moved out. This is a long time ago. I can barely remember. <laughs> Back when I, you know, back in the old days being a renter. Yeah. <laughs> Yuck. Um, back before I fucking pulled the ladder up from behind me. Yeah. Uh, it was really expensive. 
And I think we got very... It was super expensive, and then the lockdown happened, and prices dipped. Yes. Because people thought it was going to, not because it should have. I think I got very lucky right before the first long one. Rental prices went way down because they just assumed that no one would want to move out, mm. and then they fucking rocketed. So it was too expensive for us, and then we found us little tiny gap we got very lucky yeah. and then it rocketed because we weren't very happy with where we were so we did look at some other options and we were like so priced out mm. and now it's even worse yeah i moved out at the same time originally that you did yeah I moved out like a month after you and it was really cheap it was surprisingly cheap that's why i moved out yes i remember and and now the, the place that i was renting is five hundred dollars what was it before three hundred dollars a week really because I was... I really, in Frankston? Yeah. I really liked the apartment I was living in. Like, and what was that? A one bedroom? One bedroom, yeah. Which Dude, is $300 that's, is still expensive, but... That's... I was paying... crazy. I think I was paying four twenty dollars it a week. And you for had like three bedrooms. three bedroom with a garage, like a house. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Why don't you just buy a house? Um, oh, because you need a 20% deposit. No, 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 no. So I just watched Scott Morrison on TV. Yeah. And and he was asked, what should renters do if they can't buy, uh, like find a house to rent because it's too expensive? And he said, you should just buy one. Have you ever, have you tried doing that? Actually? Yeah, because... The, the house that I'm living in now, the mm -hmm. renters, the, the landlord was like, hey, we're going to sell this house... If you have six hundred thousand dollars, mm. you can have the house. Well, why don't you just do that? Oh, because I don't have. Because you're lazy and poor. I, is that the <laughs> is that the problem? I don't know. Because I've been listening to a lot of Scott Morrison press yeah. conferences, and he said, and this is true because he's the prime minister. Mm. I mean, you wouldn't want to argue with him. He's a leader of the country for a reason. <laughs> he right? knows what he's talking about. He said that if he said that if you are struggling to find a place to rent, mm -hmm. no worries. Yeah. Just get together like a hundred thousand dollars and then buy a house. Maybe I could do that if the cost of living went down significantly. Well, you, look man, all I'm, look, I'm not here to argue with you. <laughs> I'm not gonna call you stupid, but Scott Morrison said, everyone who buys a house is a renter. Yeah. So <laughs> that means a hundred percent of people who rent can buy a house. It's just the problem is they're too lazy and poor and stupid to do so. Mm. Which I'm obligated to think as a homeowner. That's, yeah. Yeah. Look. Do you think maybe petrol being $2.30 a litre would have anything to do with, like, making it hard to save? Um, maybe, but, but, I, but I would say that paying that much for petrol is a sacrifice we all have to make oh. to punish Russia. Mm. So if you want to pay, if you want the cost of living to go down, you're actually a selfish communist. And you, you're actually, you actually are anti-Ukraine. You hate Zelensky? Is that the problem? <laughs> you didn't like his films? You fucking monster. And this is why I say on the show, poor people are bad people. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I define anyone as poor as anyone who rents. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the people who rent from my properties that I don't have. Yeah. Um, look, can someone just... Why didn't Will Smith slap Scott Morrison? Mm. Bro, going on television and saying, well, you know, most people who buy houses are renters. No shit, you fucking idiot. The only other people on planet Earth are homeless cunts. Do you reckon any of them are buying homes? And also, the only people buying houses, for the most part, are cunts who already have houses. Mm. That's... The, the reason why it's fucking going up is because all these developers and all these fucking people and all these rich cunts are buying up homes so that not even poor people, just regular people can't fucking afford them. Like, you're now at a point where the average person with a, a well, good paying wage just can barely even afford to fucking rent. Mm -hmm. Like, it's crazy for to see, like, the prime minister of the country to go, oh, well, if you, you know, well, you just, just buy one. And they're, they're doing the budget here, if you're not Australian. They're, they're coming out with the, the federal budget. They've gone, hey, guys, to help with the cost of living, we've actually given out a, a $400 tax break. There you go, Keela, there's 400 bucks. Buy a house. Buy one now, you've got $400. you eligible for it. Oh, okay, well then. <laughs> sorry about that. I, sorry, my, my bad. I thought, I thought the tax cut was uh, for, for regular people. Mm. Dude, I shouldn't even have been able to buy a house. You know how, how I bought a house? I invested in magic internet coins created by some autistic savant and I got lucky. Mm. Uh, and and I, also, I also managed to fucking 
strike when during during a fucking pandemic and when the markets crashed i put a bunch of money into like this is not a normal way to buy a house and even then i almost went through a fucking mental breakdown trying to secure the house and even then i had to fucking i almost lost the house oh, like yeah. twice That's right yeah because the paperwork got fucked up uh, like you saw me when I was buying the house, it was like one of the hardest things I'd ever done. It was, and and I am not a normal fucking person. I'm a business owner who got lucky, uh, and was and was also happened to be born in the specific moment and started my career right. Like it's not a normal fucking thing. And now I'm like very broke, so it's not, it's so not a normal thing what I've done. And whenever I look at how I did it, I, I think like, how the fuck can the, the average person do it? And the answer is they can't. And the, and the reason is because they're poor and stupid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I just, I, I, I wonder, I, I don't know how this guy can go on TV every day and make me dislike him. Or not even just me, just make mo most people dislike him even more, you know? Like he did say something technically true. Most homeowners, most people who buy houses are renters. Most first homeowners are renters, but that's like, you know, if, if one guy managed to do it, you know, like if one guy managed to like run over like a, like a cliff without falling off and 99 people fell to their deaths, you go, well, most people who made it to the other side ran. <laughs> that's like technically true, but disregards all the bodies on the floor who tried to get there. So anyway, guys, support me on Patreon um, because uh, you give up on saving for a house. I would say that I support Lewis on Patreon, and I can go to, towards saving a house. Yes, yes, yeah. No, we, we uh, maybe that's that's why Keelan's struggling to find a place to rent because he doesn't get paid here, um, and uh, and that's like the perfect plug for Patreon, guys. Help. <laughs> Put Keelan in housing. Uh, Patreon.com. We got a bunch of great episodes up. Uh, last week you were you were sick, mm -hmm. Keelan. Uh, we actually had Zach fill in for you on the podcast, yeah. and I called him Keelan the whole time. Yeah. And if you read the comments, no one noticed. <laughs> oh, what? I I thought it was a very funny gag to just completely pretend the guy that was obviously not you. Yeah. Is you? Damn. Uh, no one noticed. No not, one. Not a single comment. Um. And now that makes me think, well, what, what, why does he come here? You know, like, what is the point of this guy? If he's, if he's so replaceable that, that people don't even notice when I'm clearly joking that calling... I, I should just... I shouldn't even have Zach there. I should just go, isn't that right, Keelan? Talk to my dog. <laughs> people wouldn't notice. Yeah, no one. Not one single time. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> oh, poor Keelan. Um, but on the Patreon version... Um, Rosie actually filled in for you, and I called her Keelan the whole time. Yeah. And uh, didn't get any comments either, so maybe a lot of people who listen to the show are either deaf, deaf or Rosie has quite a mannish voice. <laughs> it's one of the two. Hopefully you guys are all deaf. That's not very nice. No, she has, a, she has like the most... Actually, no, there were a lot of comments actually about Rosie and that was uh, we can't hear her she talks so yes so yeah, quietly those ones actually um, so so that's so, that, so that's good so you and Zach sound the same and Rosie no one can hear mm. so, <laughs> so a lot of people listening to that episode going am I deaf what's going on I can't <laughs> Lewis seems to be able to hear oh, we'll fix that for next time Rosie's on mic she's got a much quieter voice than than uh, than old bloody blowhorn over here <laughs> uh, um <laughs> Uh, so yeah, those Patreon episodes are up now. There's a huge backlog of like real funny, really good uh, episodes that come out weekly uh, now, and they have for the last two months, I think. So ch check out Patreon. There's a bunch of stuff there. What you was get... the reception on the episode you and I did last two weeks ago? The one of us just talking about what we would do if we were rich. Uh, quite, quite good. I think that. Oh, actually. It, that well, it, it was varied. There was like a good reception. People who people who found humour in 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 ideating horrific things to do to your fellow man. <laughs> you quite enjoyed it. A lot of people were like, hey, this this talk makes me want want to, want you guys to not do well in life because <laughs> if you guys start getting a lot of money, I feel like the planet's going to be worse off. Um, and that is something that I can guarantee. Oh, yeah. Because you know that if I'm sitting there with a gap tooth but $10 million, the world must pay. <laughs> you know? If, I, if I've got a gap tooth, guess whose problem that is? Yours. <laughs> um, 
So, yeah, that's that's all happening. The Comedy Festival is underway, actually. Buy tickets, loosebeers.com. Uh, by the time you're listening to this, I will have done my first two shows, which were sold out, and, man, I crushed. I did so well. We're recording this on a Thursday. I don't know how I've done well, but I assume that I just absolutely smashed it out of the park. Imagine if I'm in the news currently, for, like, flipping out on someone and getting into a fight with a fan, some... Some erratic reverse Will Smith situation. <laughs> like I go, like I go into the crowd. I reckon that's what Chris Rock should do. Is on his tour, he should go into the crowd and slap someone in the front row and then start crying and begging for forgiveness. I reckon that would be fucking sick. Did you see that he sold out straight away? Like he sold out his yeah. shows. Yeah, yeah. Well, man, um, Ruben hit me up, uh, me and Luke up, and uh, was like, "Oh, let's get tickets to Chris Rock." And I was like, "Yes." And I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna have surgeries." And uh, now I don't have surgeries, and he sold out. So, yes, um, yeah, man, he sold out like everywhere. And I saw that the night of his, the night of the Oscars, when it all happened, his ticket prices went from like fifty or sixty US dollars to like eight hundred to a thousand dollars, all the way up the back of the arena. Oh, did they change the prices? I don't. I think it's like resellers. Uh, so people were people were reselling for like ticket price, mm. like same price, which I think is nice. And then and then he gets slapped in the face, and they're like, "I need my fucking money. Let's raise this shit." Yeah. So, man, that's fucking sick. Um, and uh, but update on the whole Will Smith scenario. This happened today of recording Thursday. Uh, the Academy has come out. Now this was interesting. So when I watched it, it never made sense to me why Will was crying. Uh, I was like, "That's a." I understand, like, maybe maybe th- sitting back down and, like, panicking a little bit and going, oh, am I going to get in trouble? But I n- didn't really understand why it was, like, crying that much. I'm like, that's a bit weird. Mm. But everyone's been asking, why wasn't he removed? Which I think is a fair question. Like, the dude, like, assaulted a performer that was booked there that didn't say anything too fucked. That, that uh, yeah, I, crazy that he wasn't removed. Or there was no security at all. It's just so comedy. You know the I've I've been doing I've been doing stand up for eight years. You know the only gig I've ever done with security was uh, Frenchie's Frankston show. Yeah, <laughs> and that and that was and that was because it was Frankston and Frenchie. That's the only time you're ever going to get security is when Frenchie does a violent town. That's it. If I did the show, there'd be no security. But because it's Frenchie and a violent town, you'll get one guy with a beard who would probably join in uh, on punching you, depending on the joke that you told about him. Um, so, so Will, so the Academy has come out and said they did ask Will to leave, and he refused, which is really interesting. Again, not something I've seen done before. I didn't know that if security. Like, after you assault someone, when security tells you to leave, that you can just go, I would prefer not to. <laughs> and they're like, oh, well, my hands are tied. Mm. But, man, how sick would it be watching, watching like, Will get, get uh, like, led out of the venue in a fucking wrist lock? <laughs> ow, 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 Okay, 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 I'm leaving, I'm leaving. That would be sick. Um, but he refused to leave, which, which makes me think that's why he was crying. I reckon he was, he, he was like, I'm not fucking leaving, no. And then they were like, if you don't leave, there's going to be repercussions. You'll get kicked out of the academy, which is what they're saying now. They're looking at barring him from the actual academy. If they don't, that's pathetic. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's so shit uh, of, of them to do nothing. They've got to do something. At least, it's, I don't know about a li- not a life ban, but I just feel like, hey, don't come to the next one. Or, I don't know, I feel like that's... You know, the, the biggest problem with it is all of the actors standing up and giving a standing ovation was so fucked, I think, because it's like, I feel like that was a real like, yeah, we've wanted to do that to those fucking comedians for ages, making fun of us, the, the good ones, the betters. I felt like it was like, finally, someone stood up for us, the real victims. Thank you, Will. It was either that or it was just... <laughs> Oh well, we might work with him in future, so we're going to let it slide. Which, is, which is, I mean, that's how you get Harvey Weinstein, isn't it? Like it's, it's the, it's like oh, they've learned nothing. It's like oh, someone did something that's like objectively bad, but he's famous and powerful, so they sh- they should kick him out for life. You reckon for life? Violent, they did was violent. They shouldn't encourage it, and he swore on TV, which like that's true. The syndication channels could get in big trouble for it as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I imagine. I mean, I would think that Oscars probably had to pay a fine. 
Mm. Like I remember when um, when fucking uh, Tina Jackson's titty popped out uh, on the, at the Super Bowl by accident. Remember when her tit popped out? Yeah. And she had that fucking sick nipple piercing. The little fucking the massive star. That was cool. That like well, I reckon that was my sexual awakening. Like ooh, a titty. <laughs> uh, the I think they got fined like half a million dollars. Yeah, it's back then. So, but also it sets a precedent that in future that could happen again and they would get away with it. That's true. Yeah, I guess it's you need to you need to make it, make it clear that it's not okay because otherwise you're going well. Will Will Smith can do it. That's fine. He's famous enough, and it's like a big message to the other people. Like, yeah, I mean, if a comedian tells a joke, uh, you know, about a haircut then you can hit them. Yeah. You know, I found out I was, I was reading, really funny. Chris Rock didn't even write that joke. <laughs> yeah, then none <laughs> of them... one of the writers. None of them do. Yeah, there's like a team of writers. If, if, it, was, if it was a Chris Rock joke, it would have been probably funnier. Um, <laughs> and like, yeah, everyone's like, oh, she has alopecia. It's like, okay, cool. So now comedians, we need to have like a fucking medical sheet for every single person in the audience. <laughs> like, hey man, can you, before you attend my show, there's going to be fucking 200 people and my comedy festival shows, maybe even more. Can you guys all send me a medical report of every single condition you guys have and also your likes and dislikes and any lines you don't want me to cross and I'll make sure to avoid all of them and please 100% of you. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Like, there's no way that he knew she had alopecia. It's like, oh, she, he's, she's talked about it publicly. Who the fuck is watching Jada Smith stuff when they have a job and a career and a dream? The, the, I would say a real big indicator that you're dating a fucking loser who's never going to go anywhere is, oh, I watched the last episode of Red Table Talk. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You're going nowhere. It's I, a show on Facebook. If you're watching anything on Facebook, you're a drop. There's also, I saw a good TikTok about this girl who actually had alopecia and she used to be compared to, like, Gollum and really for that kind of stuff. I but shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have laughed. Being compared to G.I. Jane is kind of a compliment because she's Isn't, cool. I, I haven't seen the film. Is she a, like a cool character? Yeah. She's like a, a badass. Well then, well then even if he knew she had alopecia, cool. Yeah. Like she, like, I don't know, people are like, oh, she's probably so self-conscious about it. Wear a fucking wig then. But Make your self-consciousness obvious. Yeah, she's not self-conscious because she's spoken about it publicly. And she's also come out and said, I love it, I think it's great, and I'm not ashamed. And it's like, well, then then act like it. Take a joke. It's, I don't know, I just think that it's so so fragile and pathetic. And I, and I also think that it's not, It's I think that it's it wasn't even about the joke. I think it was just, it was just Will... It was like a last... Like I said in my video, I'm not going to repeat myself, it was like a last straw type scenario for Will. Everyone's been clowning on him for his wife fucking other dudes and, and like, cheating on him and then telling him about it to his face on her fucking show and him crying on her show and people laughing at him and making fun of him and calling him a bitch and all of this stuff for years and then Chris Rock tells, like, one harmless joke and he just sees red and then clearly regrets it because he's come out and he was crying and he was apologising. He apologised to Chris afterwards. Like, you can actually see in the footage... Even after the slap, Keelan pointed out, as he walks away, he looks so embarrassed and, like, surprised at himself. You know when you get embarrassed and your face goes red? Your yeah. face goes hot? Yeah. That's what he looked like. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I also noticed, uh, I didn't notice this the first couple times, but if you watch the bit where he goes, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth, his lips are trembling then. Yeah. So even then, he's like, what the fuck did I just do? But, yeah, you gotta... Freaking get... out. But you gotta seem tough. You made a good point in your video. Yeah. Uh, that Chris Rock turns around with his fist like uh, closed. Yes. Like ready to hit. Yes. Very funny. Looks like he was gonna punch him. Um, which I mean, how legendary would that be? That I think that is the. Sorry, I was just plugging my laptop in. I think that is like uh, a real good showing of like self control by Chris. Anyone charged? If it was the, maybe it was look. If it was the Oscars, I don't. I wouldn't react with violence. I don't think. I mean, I don't think that I would. You know, you don't really know what you're gonna do until you get hit. Like a lot, you see it all the time, where 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 like dudes are like starting a fight. You fuck a bitch, and they're acting really scary. They get slapped, and then their their body just goes. We're not that type of person. Run, mm. and they freeze, or they or they back down, or or the opposite happens, where it's like a real quiet nerdy looking dude who gets hit and then just you know some fucking lizard gene from 10,000 years ago activates and was like 
Remember 15,000 generations ago when the lion bit us and we fought back and won? It's happening again! Yeah. And that's when you get that fat kid like flipping the nerd, flipping the bully <laughs> over. That's right. Yeah. Like, this is the last time. Um, you don't really know what you're going to do. It's easy to talk about. If, I, if, I, if this happened to me, I would do this. But I, I would like to think that if someone charged the fucking stage at like a regular show, I would, I would react with violence. <laughs> like if someone gets on the stage, it's like... It's on, and I've and and it's so funny how like differently like comedy and music are perceived, or even like different genres of music. Like I remember watching this viral video of of a of a girl storming a Maroon Five stage, and like fondling the guy, and he acted like she was disgusting. He's married, and people were like, "Oh, that's so rude," and it's like, okay, or that's sexual assault, and he's reacting as he should. Actually, probably a very restrained response, right? Whereas I've been to I've been to like cursor shows where like guys have gotten on stage to like to like show how much they love him and they leave with no teeth. <laughs> because oh, really? if you yeah, I've not I've seen well because they don't know the intentions. Like real drunk guys rush the stage and curse is not telling people to do this. Yeah. But yeah. I've seen like guys rush the stage and then they fucking you know, they get hit or they get pushed off. It's like, don't fucking come on the stage. They don't know yeah. what the guy's intention is or, you know, violence is something that you do see at rap gigs. And I've seen, it's not common, but I've seen it before at, at other gigs as well where people rush the stage and they get fucked up. And yeah. it's like, whereas comedy, it's like, oh, oh, great. Someone's rushed the stage and is ruining for someone. I guess I better use my words and my wit to get out of this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I, I wonder... It's such a weird statement from the Oscars to release, though, where they're like, oh, we're thinking about doing something. Which I reckon is maybe them going, oh, if we say with... Because it, it is, at the end of the day, as fucked as it is, it is still Will Smith, mm. you know? And it's also like, it's they also have the, the whole thing of like, this was, uh, this was the first like black produced Oscars. So the last one, they got in heaps of trouble because it was too white. Oscars so white and all this kind of shit. This one was the first black produced one. So the the first black produced Oscars, they had like two black guys fighting on stage and then they're gonna ban the most famous black actor or one of the most famous black actors for life. Yeah. It's like, we let you black guys control the show for one day and if you're banned, you know, never again. What they should have done is they should have gone, the winner is Will Smith, but we're not giving the award because he broke the conduct. I, sh I reckon that's what they should have done. And then they should have kept the camera on him and not changed camera angles. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. I reckon they should have, they should have just ignored him. But, but if he refused to leave, they couldn't... Have, maybe that's what... You know what? Maybe that's what they were going to do. Because they, they asked him to leave, right? Yeah. And I guess they would have had to choose, like, oh, well, if... You know, if he isn't going to leave... Do they really want footage of him being escorted out violently by security while he's crying? Probably not. What does that mean though? He refused to leave. Well, here's the thing. Did they even ask him to leave? They said they asked him to leave. Yeah. And it's in his best interest maybe to go along with that. Yeah. Or maybe it's not. Maybe he would look better if he goes, oh, they never asked me to leave. If they did, I would have. I don't know. Um... But yeah, I guess yeah. What does it look like? Maybe they weren't clear enough with him. Maybe, like, did they did they say, "Hey, well, you need to leave because you've broken the rules and assaulted someone," or did they go, "Hey, well, we think it would be best for you to leave right now." Probably that one. Probably that, and then he would have gone, "Well, I don't want to." <clears throat> and he would have gone, "Oh, well, okay, sorry, Mister Smith." You know, it's probably that. Mm -hmm. You know, cause I feel like because it, it's a big difference between like some some like stage hand going oh please well can you leave and then like a security guard going you need to leave by your own free will or i will escort you out <laughs> like those are two different things and I, I would imagine that it's a former and he felt like he had enough i, I don't think he would like refuse to leave yeah it, although he did just storm the stage and slap someone so maybe he did may also be a thing of they didn't ask him himself they asked his publicist or his manager or his yeah i yeah because i watched I, I did see footage of like someone right up the back filming and it didn't look like he was approached by anyone really that yeah. he didn't know he he hugged denzel and talked to denzel and he talked to a couple of other people uh other actors it didn't seem like he was approached by any venue stuff but i'm just going off some like mobile phone video i saw from the back um so yeah good on good on them um 
Dude, I did uh, I did the comedy festival I opened for Luke Kidgel. Uh, great time. His show's very good. Go see it. Um, you can actually see us back to back. We're doing the same venue Fridays and Saturdays, and you can see uh, Luke's show first, my show second, or on the last weekend, the reverse, my show first, Luke's show second. Highly recommend both. They're very good. Um, but man, that's the first time I've... I think that's the first time I've opened for Luke since he's blown up on TikTok, I think. Uh, or maybe the second time. And dude, our audiences are so different now. It's <laughs> so funny. They have no idea who I am. None of them know... Like, there's always like... Because I'm, I'm like not announced. I'm kind of just there. Um, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, a couple people lose their shit. And, and what I mean by literally a couple... There's like 150 people there. Opening night, weekday. There's a couple people there lost it. Oh my God, Lewis Spears too. This is amazing. Everyone else was like, oh, I wonder, oh, he's tall. Who's that? It's so crazy. Like they don't know who I am at all. It's like a completely different audience. Uh, Cause Luke and I have always attracted very different people. And I genuinely think that whenever he performs for my crowd who don't know who he is, they love him. And whenever I perform to his crowd, they also really like me, but we, would never ever attract those people by ourselves. Like we can win them over. Mm. We'll never, they'll never find us on their own. That's, <laughs> that's the audiences we have. Like no fucking like 19 year old uni student, Gen Z girl is stumbling across my YouTube and going, you know what? I do want to watch this guy fuck with a Marxism conference for 10 minutes and get sworn at and followed. That is, that's my type of thing. I can win her over with a little bit of silly jokes and then she'll get into it, but she's never going to go from first impression of me to fan. <laughs> like, that never happens. And then the opposite is true of my, my fans. Like, if you get some, like, some, like, uh, like nerdy guy or, like, some lad-esque dude or some, like, cool sex worker girl and then they see Luke and he's talking about, oh, I, I'm, 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 I look like a mannequin. I'm, I look like every guy ever. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's, that's kind of funny, but I'm... I want something more. You know, we can win them over. We're never going to get them on our own. And it's just, it's just very funny uh, now, now seeing it. Because the reverse always used to be true. Luke would go out and, then, and they wouldn't know who he is, but they'd fucking love him. So it's really cool. It, it's kind of made me go, oh, man, I need to try harder with TikTok, um, which I have been recently. I've got, like, fucking two and a half million views this week on TikTok, which Ooh. is crazy. That's awesome. TikTok's nuts, like... I've been, I've, I've been working harder than I ever have. Uh, well, ha harder than I have for like the last eight months on YouTube and it's going quite well. Uh, and I've gotten like, oh man, how amazing. 300,000 views in, in a week. That's incredible. But then on TikTok, I've been, I put up like, you know, three, four videos and it's two and a half million in a week and I'm not even really trying. I'm like, this platform is like on another level of finding people who would like your stuff. The algorithm is insane to the point where you, all you have to do is like post daily and you'll just become famous like that. You've got a million views. Yeah, the Will Smith one got like 1.2. That's crazy. And then you got yep. 400,000 on another one. Yep. Damn. And then on a on like the most recent stand up we've got 300 whereas that it's so it's so crazy like how how good the algorithm is where sometimes like we we put something out on youtube and it bombs even though it's really good the liver king video i thought was fucking great tanked it did terribly whereas sometimes even with the same content especially like this most recent stand-up clip or one of the more one of the uh, older ones i put it out on instagram it gets like forty thousand people really like it but it doesn't go I put it out on YouTube. Again, it gets like 45,000 people really like it, but it doesn't go. I put it on TikTok, 700,000. And it just delivers your videos to exactly the type of person who would like it. And then, and then they show their friend. Um, and then they buy tickets. Like it's, TikTok is such, I've never seen something drive purchasing better than TikTok. It's better than ads. It's better than, anything that I've that I've ever used in marketing like I was uh, I was reading an article fucking books have come back because of TikTok because there's like trending book talk hashtags of people talking about books that they've read <clears throat> and uh, to the point where and this is so powerful where um, I can't remember the bookstore but the big one in America Barnes and Noble is that it mm. they they were gonna close down half their stores this year Instead, because of what they say is TikTok, 
and the sales that TikTok is generating, they're now opening 20 more. Yeah. Because of one app. It's literally changing the economy and how consumers buy things and... and, and it, I know this like, sounds like a little bit fucking hoo-ha to people who might not create, but it, it's, su- it's such a crazy thing where I can literally go from a bad day of ticket sales, upload like two clips, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's the best day of sales we've done all week. That's crazy. And it's I've never seen like such a direct correlation. Mm. Like YouTube is like much slower, real slow build. If you upload consistently once a week for an entire year, at the end of that year, when you put up a merch drop or a tour announcement, they will buy. Whereas if you, you know, upload it every week for a month, even if you got the views, that big burst of sales may not necessarily happen. Mm. TikTok, like I'm, you know, not really heard of on there at all. I put on a few videos and at the end I have my tickets and then they just, they just go like straight away. People who, who are not fans of me yet will buy something. They liked the clip. They watch two more. They go, this guy's funny. I'll buy. That doesn't happen on YouTube uh, or Instagram. It's real interesting uh, to see happen. So uh, catch me uh, blowing up on TikTok over the next eight months. Now that I don't have all these surgeries coming up, I can actually fucking plan my year. I've been thinking about it a lot. Because I thought most of my year would be me doing this. Uh, my fucking face hurts. I can't eat solid food. My jaw's wired shut. I did find out more about the second surgery. I'll end on this. This is fucked. So the recovery time for that is... Uh, is... Six to eight weeks. And 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 the, the six to eight week is that he called the danger period because that's when I'll feel good enough to injure myself. Because I'm like, oh, I feel fine. And then I'll bite into an apple and snap my jaw in mm. half. Because that, that's one where they, they chop my jawbone and then they extend it out and then they, they, they print metal plates and then they drill and then there's obviously an empty space between the two bone and that slowly grows back and fuses. So then the plates will be there for no reason, but they'll always be in my face. Someone actually came to the Luke and Lewis show and they said they had the surgery. Two people actually came and they both had the surgery and they both had... They were both very good looking people, which is awesome, really good. Every person I talk to who who have had this surgery are at worst above average looking. Mm -hmm. Like that's the ugliest person with this surgery. I'm like, oh yeah, but but that's even like, oh, maybe they put on a bit of weight, you know? Like it's not face structure. It's like, oh yeah, if you lost a bit of weight, you'd be be up there. Yeah. Girls and guys. And uh, one girl had it and she let me touch her face. She can feel the plate in there and the screws. It's fucking cool. But anyway, so the recovery time on this, six to eight weeks, and for six weeks, no solid food. No, no. Six (laughs) weeks. So, I mean, I don't have weight to lose. (laughs) I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be like, I mean, what liquid food can I eat for six weeks that isn't gonna end up Making me look like a, I've just come out of Auschwitz by the end of it. I've got the ma- the mass gaining shakes. I can get about if I have two shakes a day, which is heaps. It's like a liter of milk and powder every day, which I'll have to do. I think that's like two thousand calories, just those two, almost. So that's a lot, but that's not maintenance for me. I think maintenance for me is like two five or two eight because I'm so long. Oh really? Yeah. Um, Simpsons did an episode where Homer's jaw was wide shut. Mm. <laughs> have you seen the episode? And I they think just so. put like full meals into a blender and blend yeah. It out. yeah. Yeah, I'll have to do that. I'll blend. It would be like a actually that that is a very funny I'm I'm thinking of like the content that I can make with my jaw, because my jaw's wide shut for a long time. I'm thinking about the type of content I can make. Because I reckon I can I can bank up like four or f- in, in in two months I could probably make like six to seven good videos that can be released two months from when they're filmed mm. uh, but I reckon I got to do some videos in the in the shit like with the jaw wide shut and maybe that's one like trying different meals blended you could do a Lou review but record the audio beforehand and then present it with your jaw wide shut. That's funny. Yeah. That's a good idea. I should do that. Because I... Uh, or, right, that's the... So that's option one. Option two is I thought this was really funny. I could do a face reveal. 
I could be the first known creator to do a face <laughs> reveal, you know? Like I could go, I could get the surgery and then go anonymous. Yeah. And then two months later, do my face reveal. That's so funny. That's so good. Maybe I do that. I don't know. Set, like, let me know. Write in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts on what I should do and what I should eat as well. Um, all right, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm going to continue on the Patreon podcast. We've got a bunch of other stuff we want to talk about on over on Patreon. So if you are supporting, if you go over there, support me. That'll be up right now. And I'll see you at the shows, man. Uh, Fridays and Saturdays, loosebeers.com. They're filling up now, so grab your tickets. And I will see you there. And I'm meeting everyone afterwards. And we've got merch and posters. And I'm signing everything. So come down, dude. It's going to be great. This will be the last time you'll get to see me uh, without a fucking gap in my tooth, teeth or braces. So... Oh my god, that sucks. Have a shit one. Bye.